want to show you a style of bobble that goes with the autumn wink collection. I'm using the same style of stitches to match that, but I could not resist throwing this onto an ornament or a bobble, whatever you call it. And I thought it would be fun. Of course I experimented and I ended up creating quite a few different sizes and shapes of this, which was super fun to do. What I'm going to do on camera today is I'm going to show you the, about the traditional size of this is plastic ornament that you can get from the store. This is the one that's usually sold more in bulk. So you can get a larger quantity for less price. And it's this size here. This is what we're going to be making on camera today. So I'll show you how to do this one. And then in the pattern, there's going to be a guide on how to adjust it for different sizes of um, ornaments. The cool thing is it's very stretchy, so it's easy to um, put it on different shapes. And this is more of an oval style shape on the side, a flat, almost like you took an ornament and you squished it a little bit more flat. Um, and then this is a bigger one. I also found in, in my attic some, some wood ones. So these are all different shapes here. So there will be a guide in the pattern that once you learn how to do this, and I'm going to just show this size on camera today for stitch counts, but you'll be able to use this pattern on a variety of sizes of ornaments in case you're like me and you've been collecting stuff like this for years and it sits in your attic forever. And now you finally decided something to do with it. So you may have have some, some craft, um, things sitting around that you might want to use. So also what you will need is yarn. Um, today I'm going to be using the upcycle alpaca worsted because this is what I used for the autumn wheat collection. Um, I'm going to be showing it in the color sage in this size. But like I said, this is a worsted weight here. Um, I'm going to, you can really use any weight of yarn you want based on the guide that, that is going to tell you how to adjust for different sizes. So even though this is a worsted, I do feel like it's more like a DK weight, honestly, is it's, it's a lot thinner. Um, but you can raid your stash and you'll be surprised. You can really use a lot of different weights of yarn to create these. So it's, it's a great stash buster. You'll want a size G four millimeter crochet hook for the one I'm showing on camera today with the suggested yarn. But if you are going with a different weight yarn, you may want to adjust your crochet hook. For this Brava tweed, I used an H hook. So it's really um, what you think goes best with the yarn because of course we're not gonna use like a size G hook for a bulky weight yarn. So you wanna get the right hook that matches the yarn. And if you look at the yarn labels, a lot of times they will give us an indication maybe of what um, hook size we might wanna consider using. You'll also want a pair of scissors and a yarn needle to weave in those ends. And it's really quite simple. So let's get started. Now, believe it or not, this is the shape that we're going to be making. This is a rectangle. Yes, I know we're putting it on a circle, but we're actually making a rectangle to do this, which is really easy because if you can work in rows, then you can make this. Now for this average bobble, we are going to leave a long tail and then we are going to create a slip knot and place that onto our hook. And then we are going to chain 19. Now we, now we are going to tighten down that last chain and starting in the second chain from the hook, I like to work in the back humps of this. We're going to single crochet one, and then we're going to half double crochet until the last stitch in the row. So then we'll half double crochet 16 stitches and we'll have one sit at uh, one stitch left. Now for the very last stitch in the row, we are going to single crochet. So the first and the last stitch of every single row is going to be a single crochet. That's what helps it tighten down a bit towards the bottom and the top. So it's a little bit less bulky when we are pulling it together. So I'm going to turn my work and now we are going to single crochet. I like to chain one. And now for row two, we are going to chain one and single crochet in the back loop only for the first stitch. And then we're going to work until the very last stitch of this row by working half double crochets in the third loop only. How we do that is we look at the top of our, our work here, we see that V and normally we would enter our stitch like so. Let me grab a needle here so we can really see this stitch. We would normally enter our stitch from this top part like this, where this is where we would enter a stitch when we are regular crocheting. 
But we are going to work our half double crochets in what's called the third loop. And that for this project is facing us when we're working in rows. So this is the third loop. This is what we want to work into. This is what creates that beautiful knit stitch. So we're not entering here like we normally would. We're going to enter here in the third loop. So that's what's facing us along the front of this almost. And that way it leaves those stitches to look knit on the other side. So I'm going to yarn over, insert that third loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three. And that is how we work the half double crochet in the third loop. And all of our half double crochet stitches except for one, our starting row, and then the row after the puff stitches will be worked in the third loop. That's what's going to give us that those beautiful vertical lines on this ornament. So we'll work this third loop until we get to the very last stitch in the row. And now that we are to the very last stitch, we are going to single crochet in the back loop only. And you kind of have to turn your work a little bit to grab that back loop single crochet because we're, we're working on it. it, kind of rotates our fabric. We got to rotate towards us, find that single crochet in the back loop and work a single crochet stitch. Then I'm going to chain one and turn my work. And for row three, we're just going to be repeating that. So we're just going to be repeating this, uh, what we did on row two, until we have a total of 12 rows for this size of bobble. Now, if you're doing a different size bobble, you'll be doing more rows before you do the puff stitches. What I try to do is make sure that the seam, this is actually the seam here, is on the back of my work. That way it doesn't show uh, when it's up on the tree. I know it's not noticeable, but I like to hide things on the back of my work. And that way this is the front and the showstopper of this ornament. And so we put the puff stitches in the center of our fabric, as you can see here, so that when it's wrapped around, our uh, seam is on the back of our work. So for row three, I've chained one, and we're going to single crochet in the back loop only, half double crochet in the third loop until the very last stitch in the row, and then we will single crochet in the last stitch in the row in the back loop only. So I'm going to do this for a total of 12 rows, and then we will come on back. Now that we have 12 rows, we will be working our puff stitch rows next. So we'll do two rows of puff stitches. So I'm going to turn my work and chain one, and then in the very first stitch, we will single crochet in the back loop only. We'll be doing that for every row. Now to do the puff stitches, we're going to do slanted puff stitches. So we're going to skip the next stitch. So we're going to skip one, and then single crochet into the next. And now we're going to go back to the stitch that we skipped. So we're kind of working backwards here. We're going to yarn over, insert our hook into the skipped stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, insert into that skipped stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then one more time of yarning over, inserting, yarning over, and pulling up a loop. We now have seven loops on our hook. The way I love to work these is to yarn over and pull through the very first six and then yarn over and pull through the last two. I feel like it tightens up the top of that puff stitch and makes it puff a little bit more. So let's do that one more time. We're going to skip the next stitch and single crochet into the next. Then we're going to go back to our skip stitch and we're going to work a puff stitch. And that's our repeat to work until we get to the very last stitch in the row where we will single crochet in the back loop only. So that's to skip a stitch and single crochet, go back to the skip stitch and work a puff stitch. We'll repeat that all the way across. Now that we are at the last stitch of the very first puff row, we're going to single crochet into the back loop only. And now we're going to turn our work and we're going to work that puff row again. So um, I have I'm going to chain one, single crochet in the back loop only of the very first stitch, skip the next stitch and single crochet into the next, and then go back to that skip stitch and create a puff stitch. So we're doing the same thing as we did before. We're just working uh, into the puff row from before, but we're, we're just counting the stitches the exact same way. So we'll skip the next stitch and single crochet into the next. 
go back to the skip stitch and work a puff stitch. And this makes that almost uh, like a really pretty braided look with these puff stitches, almost like a Christmas wreath too. I, I named it after the, for the autumn wheat collection because it looks like wheat, but I also think this looks like a wreath. And I do have some other patterns that use it that way um, as a wreath. These puff stitches are something I've totally fallen in love with. So now I'm going to work the puff stitches all the way across until the very last stitch. And then we will single crochet in the back loop only for the very last stitch of the row. Now, after working that last single crochet in the back loop only, I'm going to turn my work and we are done with our puff rows. And now we need to start working back into this pattern repeat. But for this very first row, we won't be able to work the half double crochet in the third loop. It's just not really easy to do. So we're going to start by doing a single crochet in the back loop only. And then we're simply going to half double crochet until the very last stitch where we will single crochet in the back loop only. So we're just doing regular half double crochets for this row. And then the remaining of the pattern will be half double crocheting in the third loop. So now after doing a regular half double crochet row, I can turn my work and now I will start back in that pattern where we'll single crochet in the very first stitch in the back loop only and then half double crochet into that third loop all the way across until the last stitch where we will single crochet in the last stitch. I also want to note just by nature the puff stitches will look like they're bowing a bit right here. It'll even out. Um, puff stitches have a lot more yarn so this this row might make it a little bit wonky for a second but don't worry, it looks really good once you keep working and you get it onto the ornament. It makes it lay flat. Now I did a total of 12 rows after the puff stitches. So for this size, there's a total of 26 rows. I did 12 rows here, did two rows of puff stitches and 12 rows here. Now what you can do, because not all ornaments may be the same, is you can kind of wrap this around to make sure, and you have to stretch it just a little, to make sure that it's going to look good and fit and fit all right. That's a great way to find out is just to simply do that. Now we're going to be doing some seaming. So I am going to put my hook back in here. I like to do a slip stitch seam. It's really easy to do. So I'm going to fold my current row and my first row together like so. I've chained one and I'm going to go through the back loops only of the single crochet stitches and slip stitch those together. Now to make this really nice, I like to do a, a different kind of seam. So I'm going to go through the third loop on the side closest to me and then the front loop on the side farthest away and then slip stitch those together. That's what I'm going to be working for all these half double crochet stitches. So, th so through the third loop, through the front loop and slip stitch together. Now on this side of the fabric, it might not look the greatest. The seam is a bit more noticeable, but when we flip this inside out, the seam, you don't really notice that you have this still in pattern and you're not really noticing much of the seam. So that's why I do it this way and then I'll flip it inside out. So I'm going to slip stitch the third loop and then the front loop from the other side all the way across. And then in the last stitch for the single crochet, I will just slip stitch um, the front, the um, back loops of the single crochet stitches together really doesn't matter too much for those edge stitches. And once we have these all the way across, then we will be joined. Now, once we have joined all the way across, we can go ahead and leaving a long tail, longer tail for this side, we're going to go ahead and fasten off. This doesn't use that much yarn, so I don't mind leaving a long tail. What I like to do before I, slip, I flip this inside out is I'm going to take the yarn that I just fastened off and I'm going to place it on a yarn needle. I'm just going to loop through to secure that last stitch. And now I'm going to weave all the way to the other side. So we have a yarn, yarn already on this side for us to use, but we'll need to close the top over here. So instead of attaching a new piece, I am simply going to weave this piece and it doesn't have to be perfect because remember we are going to flip this inside out. I'm just going to weave this piece across so that it is on the other side of our um, project that's on the open side. So to close the sides, we'll need yarn on the top and the bottom of this. So I'm simply just making my uh, strand go to the other side. 
So now once I'm on the other side, we can go ahead and flip this inside out, pull that tail through, and now we're ready to put it on the ornament and see how nice that seam is. You barely can see it. It's, it's a really nice invisible join. So what we will do next is we can go ahead and put our ornament on here. Now you have a couple options. You can go ahead and put your ornament in here to close the top first, or you can go ahead and close the bottom, then come back to this. I have decided, even though I've done it both ways, it, it's not a big deal. I honestly think you would barely notice on a tree, but I like these going upwards, I guess you could say, towards the top of the ornament versus coming down like this one is. But really, they both look great. So I don't, I don't know that it really matters. It could be reversible. I'm just pointing it out because if you're a picky person and you want it done a certain way, then you want to be conscious of the top of the ornament and the way that these, these uh, cluster puff stitch bees kind of go. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my uh, ornament in here already. And it should be decently tight enough that it's not going to slip out of this. It's just going to stay there. And now I'm going to be slip stitch joining this all the way around the top. So to do this, I'm just going to be grabbing part of these strands. So about at the top of each one of these uh, knit look rows, I'm just going to grab one strand. So just a, just a tiny amount of yarn from each of the top of those and work my way around. And you can see it's not, I'm not weaving through a ton here. I'll just keep working that until I've reached the start. When it comes to the puff stitches, grab whatever you can. And now I'm back at the beginning of this, um, where I started where the seam was. And what we can do is we're simply going to pull this strand and that will close this opening. So we'll simply pull this and now it's tight around there. And then that closes that opening for us. And I'm going to weave through a couple more times just to make sure that this is really secure, but then we'll come back and we'll do it again to the bottom of this. So to get it to look nice and tight around there, weave around a couple more times. If you like go in the opposite direction, uh, make sure that it is fastened securely around this ornament. And now that we are at the bottom part of this, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to loop through a strand about at every point where we see that knit look row going on there. And we'll do that all the way around. So we're just looping through all the stitches on this edge, just the same way we did as the, on the top, not catching every row, but every so often and we'll keep going all the way around and then we'll do the same thing as we did before and we're simply just going to pull that closed look how nice that is we'll completely close that hole by weaving it through a couple more times and making it really secure so as you weave through again that's what helps really eliminate that hole as we tighten it down once you are done weaving through, we can fasten off and our ornament is done. If you can believe it. it's a really quick project. I am going to tell you these are addicting. So fair warning. I continue to make these because they're so much fun. Uh, who knows how many I will have by the end of the season and how many different shapes I'll have because they're so much fun to do. I really hope that you have enjoyed this fun ornament bobble tutorial. Hit that subscribe button and come back for some more fun projects soon. And if you've enjoyed doing this stitch, you must check out the Harvest Week collection, the entire collection, hats, mittens, um, a sweater in adult, child sizes, as well as an air warmer. They're all made flat. So if you can crochet this, you can crochet anything in that collection.